I really drilled all those shots. There's no CGI in there. I don't think we had to see the budget for that. So that makes me feel good. Hi, I'm Zach Efron, and I'm going to rewatch some scenes from throughout my career. Some of these are probably going to be pretty visceral, but some of them are probably going to be really fun. I have no idea. <laughs> all right, here we go. What, what are you this? wearing? What, what are you doing? Yeah. We're throwing a Robert De Niro party. Oh. Should be pretty fucking loud. It's probably gonna go pretty fucking late, too. I'm a taxi driver, De Niro. Yeah, I meet the fuck is De Niro. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm watching you. <laughs> That's you dead that on. Mole on your face. Did you do that yourself? Yes, I did. Yes, yes I, I did. did fuck her. Oh my god, that's so funny. Um, wow. I remember this day. Oddly, like very vividly, like, there was so much going on. Seth is so good at improv. He's like, I, Seth is to this day is one of my favorite actors of all time. In this scene in particular, I remember really not having a De Niro impression, like a very good one at all, and just kind of knowing I was going to be winging it and hopefully betting on the fact that the worse it was, the funnier it would be. And it worked out. <laughs> I was blown away though when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Dave Franco had completely nailed his. To your impression, like he just crushes that. Are you talking to me? Yes. Yes. Are you talking to me? He literally looks like him. He uh, looks like De Niro. So I'm I'm here like up front sucking, doing taxi, De Niro, and then he comes out and it's like says, <laughs> "Yeah, you fucking talking to you." I was like, "Did you practice this?" It was so funny. I was like, "What the fuck? He's killing this." Who are you? Oh, I'm uh, Sam Jackson, you know, from Jackie Brown. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 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 That's not even, yeah. Send him a woman. <laughs> 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 no here. It's Seth and Rose doing what they do so well, which was just naturally reacting to this ridiculousness outside the window. The hua, hua. Like, that's not even De Niro, that's Pacino. And I don't remember who did it first, but someone did it, and we all just started copying it. <laughs> And Seth's reaction to it was very genuine. It was like, that's not even, you guys, it's not even an impression. And we just kept doing it to make him upset because it was making him mad and it stayed in. That's one of the most fun movies I've, I've ever filmed. So grateful for that and that experience. Man, I feel like I'm back there. I haven't watched this. This is crazy. I never watched this stuff. This is insane. It's cool. I know they're making it look like I do this, but I don't do this. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Uh, first thing that comes to mind is I really drilled all those shots. There's no CGI in there. I don't think we had to see the budget for that. So that makes me feel good. That just takes me back to where all of us were at, all the, the young men on that team. We were so young and um, so incredibly motivated. Not many people know this, but I th you know, High School Musical was just a made-for-TV movie, and it was very uh, small, so we had a very condensed shooting schedule. And, very limited rehearsal time. Our choreographer, Chucky, is actually in that shot, and Kenny Ortega had pretty big ambitions for this movie, but I think he was pleasantly surprised when all the boys were like excited to not only fulfill uh, what he wanted, but to take it one step further. This whole sequence with the basketballs and, and the dribbling in that movie, we started practicing with basketballs, and I think, I think we might have practiced it for two days prior to, the, to doing all that in sync. We probably had maybe two three hour rehearsals with basketballs. After like five takes, we nailed it. Like we got it all in one. Like they didn't cut from start to finish. And all of us were blown away. And I think that was the first time all of us went, is this gonna be cool? <laughs> this felt really cool. It was a really special moment. And uh, I'm still just proud of all those guys for doing that. Cause it was hard, it was hard. But you can't predict where basketball's going. A lot of people got hit in the face. It was hilarious, man. It's so funny. I just see, I look so light in my feet in that. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, I love you, Kenny. I miss you guys. Man, that's bringing it all back. I haven't watched that in years. That's crazy. Bye, Chris. Bye. See ya. Oh my God, you're not Jack and Rose. Just get out of the car. Get out of the car. What do you want? 
I didn't come here looking to have sex with your mom, all right? I came to your house looking for you so I could offer you this job. I, oh, God. Ah! Joey's so good in that scene. She's so great in that. You know, I had seen uh, her earlier work from when she was a little bit younger, and I noticed back then that, like, she was just acting beyond you know, anybody else I'd seen at her age. We had so much fun working together as we kind of got back to that place where we were in that De Niro scene. Like we, that was the kind of the, the shape of the scene that we had planned, but a lot of that stuff we added our own like flavor too, which was really fun. Celebrity, she didn't sleep with a celebrity. That's derogatory, okay? I'm a movie star. She slept with a movie star. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't remember <laughs> saying that that way. I wanted there to be a clear delineation uh, between Chris Cole and like myself as much as I can relate in, in ways to things that Chris might be going through, I think uh, the way that he handles it is very different from myself. I got to play like the worst version of somebody experiencing fame and sort of the fear and the imposter syndrome that, that comes with that. On the one hand, I'm still like starstruck every time I see her. So that's, and it's never, I don't think that's ever gonna change. It's weird, I, even to this day. I, th I really just am, in a sense, just always going to be in permanent awe of her. I don't know. I've got a deep trust and, um, and like, respect for her that I think just makes it fun. Like, I look forward to scenes with her, and there's very little stress. I just got to get past that initial, you're Nicole Kidman, and we're doing a scene together. Okay, cool. Let's go. I saw that one back fairly recently. My f friend invited me over for dinner and he's got quite a few kids and it was just on. I realized I had entered a trap. <laughs> so <laughs> I sat there and 20 minutes later we were all like up singing and dancing and doing like acrobatics on the couch. It was really fun. I mean, I love, I, uh, musicals are very, very near and dear to my heart. I think they always will be. Michael Gracie, I think Michael Gracie and Hugh, they're, in they're incredibly special people. I think that Michael is, such a visionary. I can admit that when, at the time that he came to me and sort of pitched this film to me, a musical was probably not the first thing I was um, looking for at the time. Then he sort of played me the music and talked me through his vision, and it was one of the most ambitious, <laughs> um, but also well thought out explanations of a story that, that I've ever experienced. This is, it's, it's kind of, Similar to working with Sean Durkin on the Iron Claw, it was very clear that Michael Gracie had this in his dreams and he was gonna bring to life a very vivid dream that meant something very special to him and was not one to compromise. So if you're gonna make a musical, you better make it damn good. And I felt like this was a chance to make it good. The choreography for this scene was actually pretty extensive. All of those shot classes, we really did that. And the guy in the middle, his name's Cloud, he was uh, extraordinarily talented. And we practiced for weeks and weeks to get that right. To not mess that up was, was we had to catch them all in the right timing, drink them on the right timing, send them back, catch new ones, do dancing in the middle, and not mess up the words. And it was really hard. It looks effortless, and I'm happy that it looks that way, but that's how, like, how Cary Grant is like it seems effortless but there's a lot of rehearsal that goes into that i love seeing that back that's wild it's crazy the way that he revealed zendaya's character that was such a cool thing and bless her heart she really did that every time she like flew from across the room on a trapeze and then like went into her close-up like a lot it was very impressive. I mean, Zen's the best. She's just, she's great. She's down for anything. Um, she's super brave. I've got so much respect for Zen. I, I hope we get to do something again in the future. She's the best. I'll never forget it. It's really nice to watch this stuff with you guys. It's weird, I'm like getting emotional over this. It's crazy.
you okay, Dad? Lee, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, boys. You shouldn't see me like this. Man doesn't cry. Sean Durkin, the director of this movie, was had a very carefully drawn out plan for the execution of this film and of course on purpose put this scene probably very, very much last up in the film and I think it was for good reason. Kevin Von Erich was, was never meant to be seen crying because the family was not allowed to show weakness and I thought that was a really fantastic note from Sean and a brilliant kind of thing to guide me through the movie and, and there were a lot of scenes I think earlier in the film that warranted tears. I wanted to cry a lot during this movie and he was just say, no, hold it back, hold it back for the right moment. But then this day came along, it was the last day of filming, and I couldn't hold back tears. And all I'm thinking here is, don't cry, dude, you're gonna have to do it again. Like, Sean's not gonna go for this. <laughs> and um, when they said, you know, we'll be your brothers, I just lost it. We'll be your brothers, Dad. Yeah, Dad, we'll be your brothers. I thought I'd ruin the take at that point, but I decided to stay in it. And when we finished, the boys kind of ran away and we continued the take, and I looked up at Sean, to, uh, I was about to apologize. He's like, no. That was it. I was like, really? So this was the first time, I think, that he wanted Kevin to experience this emotion. So I was happy that Sean was happy. It's a cool scene. Well, thank you so much, Vanity Fair. Thank you for watching. <laughs>